Okay, continuing on with our lecture, we've talked about the different types of balances that accounts have, what their normal balance is, and how to increase them or decrease them, and what debit and credit mean, and all that kind of good stuff. Okay, so now we need to learn about um, journal entries. Transactions come off of source documents. So source documents are things like checks or invoices and things of that nature. And we need to record the information and somehow get it into um, the accounts. Now, the way you do that, it, as opposed to just making entries directly into the accounts, transactions are first recorded with a journal entry. Okay, journal entries are nice because all pieces of the transaction are in one spot. And it's also chronological. So I could go back to any given day and see what happened on that day. Okay, so that makes it really nice. All right, and then each journal entry must have at least one debit and one credit. Okay. All right, then the next step would be, let's see, after the journal entry is made, next step would be to post, to post or transfer the dollar amounts to each individual account in the ledger. Okay, so that's what we're going to be working on for the rest of the chapter, or for, actually through this video. Actually, the accounting cycle is about eight steps that we'll be covering. And the books might be a little different. I don't really know, but anyway, it's fine. All right, the first step is to journalize daily transactions in the journal. All right, the second step is to post to the ledger accounts in the ledger. All right, the third step is to prepare what's called a trial balance. And this is to um, ensure that debits equal credits, the dollar amounts, okay? And we're gonna do all of this in, in chapter two, all right? Then we'll, in chapter three, we'll do something called adjusting journal entries. All right, so we'll, we'll do, what we'll do is adjust in journal entries and post them. Then step five would be an adjusted trial balance to make sure that everything still balances out. Then six would be to prepare the financial statements. Then seven is Prepare and post closing entries. And then finally, step eight is a post closing trial balance. Oh my gosh, I'll fix it later. Okay, so this is chapter two. This is chapter two. This is chapter two. This is chapter three. Three. Financial statements really are chapters one through four, but actually they go on through the whole book. So I don't even know if I can really say chapters one through four. This is chapter four and this is chapter four. So basically the first four chapters will go through the whole accounting cycle. All right. And right now we're up here in steps one, two, and three is what we're going to be finishing up. <clears throat> All right. So 
journalizing. Couple steps to doing a journal entry. Uh, let me just go to one. Okay, so here is, these are the same events that happened in chapter one, but we put them in that accounting equation format. Now we're gonna do the journal entries for it. All right, so in this step one here, um, Sheena Bright, the owner of the company, deposited $30,000 in the business account. And yeah, that's how they're, doing, they're calling it capital. Okay, so um, for journal entries, you have several parts. All right, this is what the journal looks like. You typically have the date, the account, a debit, and a credit. All right, so this was on November the 1st. Oops. What is happening? Okay, so we have November 1st, the business received cash. Cash is an asset, it's increasing, and you increase an asset with a debit. So we're gonna have a debit to cash for 30. And then we have to have a credit for 30 because every journal entry has to balance out, all right? The, for each individual journal entry, the debits have to equal the credits, okay? The dollar amounts. Um, the owner deposited it, so it's going to go into her capital account, okay? If, if she was issued stock, this would be a credit to common stock. <clears throat> all right, the next thing that happened, what happened next? All right, then they bought some land and they paid cash for it. So on November 2nd, the business bought some land. Land is an asset, it's increasing. So we need to debit the asset that's increasing. It was $20,000. We have to have a credit for 20,000. All right, they paid for it with cash. Cash is an asset, it's decreasing. So the credit's gonna be to cash. It needs to be an entry on the right-hand side, which is the credit side. Uh, then they bought office supplies on account. So office supplies are an asset. It's increasing. So I'm going to debit office supplies for the 500. Buying it on account means that I haven't paid for it yet. I still owe for it. I have an obligation to pay and that's an account payable. The account payable is increasing. You increase the liability with the credit. All right. Then they um, collected fifty-five hundred for service revenue for services that they provided. This was on November the eighth. All right. So they collected cash. Cash is an asset. It's increasing. Increases to cash are made with a debit. So I'm going to have cash for fifty-five hundred. And they received the 5500 because they provided services, so they earned some revenue. So my credit is going to be to service revenue. And it's a credit because revenue increases equity, and you increase equity with the credit. All right, the next one. Um, they perform services for clients. The clients will pay the company later. They earned $3,000. Okay, so I have the right to receive payment, so that's an accounts receivable. It's an asset, it's increasing, so I'm going to debit the accounts receivable. And then just like the entry before, I have this because I earned some revenue, so I'm gonna credit service revenue, and revenue is a credit because it ultimately increases equity. All right, then I paid some expenses. I, expend, I paid rent and employee salaries. Expenses decrease equity, and you decrease equity with a debit, so expenses are recorded with a debit. So I'm gonna have a debit to the rent expense for 2,000, 
a debit to salary expense for twelve hundred. And then notice I have more than one debit, and that's perfectly fine. This is a compound journal entry. Um, the key is that the total of my debits have to equal the total of my credits. So I paid for this stuff, so I'm going to have $3,200 credit, and it's going to come out of cash. I paid cash, and it makes sense that cash is a credit because it's decreasing, and you decrease an asset with a credit. All right, then I paid $300 on the accounts payable from up here. Okay, so accounts payable is a liability. It normally has a credit balance. It's decreasing, so I need to debit to decrease it. And I paid it with cash. So cash is giving me my credit for 300. Now I want you to also notice how I'm setting this up. All my debits are listed first, and then my credits are listed second, all right? And then I've indented over, so it's very clear what entry is being made on the left and what entry is being made on the right. All right, then I collected $2,000 from the client on November the 10th. Oh, oh, sorry, this is November 22nd. So I collected cash, cash is an asset, it's increasing. So I'm gonna debit the cash account. And accounts receivable is also an asset, but it's decreasing because now they're paying on that um, and I'm receiving their payment. So I'm going to credit accounts receivable when I receive the money because that's going down. And I decrease an asset with a credit. And then finally, um, Sheena, the owner, withdrew cash. And this is set up more as like a sole proprietorship, okay? So this one's going to be a withdrawal. If it was a corporation, it would be a dividend. All right, with withdrawals decrease equity, so that's why the withdrawal is recorded with a debit. And cash went out of the business. Cash is an asset. It's decreasing, so I'm going to credit the cash. And I think she got something else here. Oh, we're going into December. Okay, so now we're doing some new journal entries. So December the 1st. They paid three months office rent in advance. All right, since I'm paying it in advance, I haven't used it up yet. This is going to be the prepaid rent. Prepaid rent is an asset. It's increasing, so it ha it's recorded with the debit, excuse me. Cash went out the door, cash is an asset. It's decreasing, so it's a credit. Then they paid employee salaries of 1200 so I'm going to have salary expense. Salary expense is a debit because it decreases equity. And then cash went out the door. Cash is an asset. It's decreasing, so it's a credit. Then December the 1st, Smart Touch Loan purchased a building in exchange for a note payable. Okay, so the business received a building so building is an asset, it's increasing. So you're gonna debit the building account. I haven't paid for it yet. I put it on a note, which is a liability. It's increasing. So I'm gonna credit note payable and that's 60,000. All right, notice that I'm recording it even though I haven't actually like paid any cash for it yet, but I do owe somebody for the building. So it's, it's recorded at the time you make the purchase regardless of how you paid for it. Okay, then on December 2nd, Sheena contributed furniture with a fair market value of $18,000 to the business. So the business got furniture. Furniture is an asset. It's increasing. So I'm going to debit furniture. It was given to them. It was a contribution by the owner. So it's going into her capital account. Right, and notice it went in at fair market value because it was given to them. If they had to buy it, that's what they would have had to pay for it. All right, December the 15th, Smart Touch Learning received a telephone bill for $100 and will pay this expense next month. 
okay but you need to record it when it's incurred so you're going to debit utility expense when you get the bill I haven't paid for it yet, but I have an obligation to pay for it. So I'm going to credit the liability utility payable. It's increasing and you increase the liability with the credit. All right, December 15th, I paid employees. So I'm gonna have a salary expense again. And cash is gonna go out the door. So I'm gonna credit cash for the 1200. December 21st, a law firm engaged Smart Touch Learning to provide e-learning services and agreed to pay $600 in advance. Okay, so I got some cash. Cash is an asset. It's increasing, so I'm going to debit cash for $600. But my credit, I haven't earned it yet. I, they paid me in advance of the job, so I cannot credit service revenue because I haven't earned it. I owe them the job. So I'm going to credit unearned revenue which you need to make note of is a liability. All right, I either owe them the job or I owe them the $600 back. All right, then on December 28th, I collected 8,000 for service revenue and I actually collected it. So I collected cash, oops. Cash is an asset, it's increasing. So I'm gonna debit the cash account. And I earned it, so I'm gonna have a credit to service revenue. And I think that is it for journal entries, but we don't have everything posted. So I'm just gonna show you how to post a few of them. So let me pause, I'm gonna create the T accounts. Okay, so I just have a couple of the accounts. I'm, I'm not gonna go through all of them. But if you look at the exercises that I did the videos for, I we do post and I post to all of the ones that are in the question. So, all right, so posting means that you're gonna take these numbers and you're gonna post them over to the individual accounts. So like the first one, I would have 30,000 to cash. So I would debit cash. Oops, not in the right spot there. Okay, then I have a $30,000 credit to capital, so I would come down here to capital on the credit side and do the $30,000. All right, and then I have 20,000 to land, so I would go to the land account, put 20, and it came out of cash, so I would do a credit for 20 over there. Um, then I bought office supplies for 500, so I'm gonna debit office supplies, so I have a debit to office supplies. And I have a credit to accounts payable, so I go to accounts payable and credit for 500. Then I had, um, I don't think I did revenue. So anyway, you get the drift, you would go on like that. Then once you're done, you'll have something similar to what they have here. Okay, so here's my cash account all done. And what they did to get this $12,200 is they added up all the debits they added up all the credits and then they subtracted and they still had a debit balance of 12,200. Okay, but go watch some of the exercises because I do that in the exercises. All right, one more video after this one for the trial balance.